Well, it seems like after some tumultuous, tumultuous events that Microsoft is finally looking to back up from putting games on other platforms in the future. Do you believe this? What does your boy MM2K think? Let's look into it. What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It is your boy MM2K back again with another one with a very interesting one. But do me a favor before we get into all this tasty goodness in the gaming news world today. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up because like I always tell you, I am not too proud to ask. All right, so here's what's going on here. Um, on the heels of Microsoft continuously being mocked and memed and laughed at for quote unquote having no games or better yet having no exclusives and then them following up with that with the business model of hey we have games that we're going to create and curate however we're going to try to put them everywhere including other consoles right on the heels of all that you finally have Microsoft out of nowhere sending statements to different news platforms saying, hey, look, no further. We are no longer planning to put um, exclusive Xbox created content on other platforms besides PC. All right. So let's take a deep look into this. All right. First, I want to show you the story. And then after that, we're going to talk about this and see where all this came from. And lastly, just give I just want to share my thoughts with you let you know if I if I think this is legitimate or not but let's take a look at the story here all right so this comes directly from gameindustry.biz and the story reads as follows Microsoft has no plans to release more Xbox exclusives on PlayStation 4 or Nintendo Switch company says the focus is on its own platforms now this is per the uh, um, um, a statement that was sent directly to gamesindustry.biz. This is not being read third party from another uh, um, publication that's um, trying to make their own sense of what game industry biz is reporting. This is the publication that Microsoft sent their statement to, and it reads as follows. The article reads as follows. Microsoft has no plans to release more exclusive content uh, more exclusive Xbox games rather on other consoles. It comes after the firm announced via Nintendo that it will publish Ori and the Blind Forest Definitive Edition on Nintendo Switch. The game was previously exclusive to Xbox One and PC. Nintendo and Xbox have been collaborating over the past 12 months, including the introduction of Microsoft's Banjo and Kazooie and to Nintendo's Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Nintendo's also called out our friends at Microsoft for supporting the release of Cuphead on Switch, although Microsoft has told GameBiz, GameIndustry.biz that Cuphead was never an exclusive Xbox IP. Technically it wasn't, but whatever. And is the property of developer studio MDHR. Xbox has also recently acquired a number of studios that have released or will release games on Nintendo Switch, including Obsidian, Double Fine, and Ninja Theory. However, in a statement to GameIndustry.biz, Microsoft has played down future releases. Quote, the past year has been exciting, has been an exciting time for us as we have more than doubled the internal creative teams making up Xbox Game Studios, the company stated. As these new studios transition in, we were aware of some existing commitments to other platforms and will honor them. However, going forward, these new studios will focus on making games for our, our platforms. We have no plans to further expand our exclusive first party games to other consoles. We continue to believe deeply in cross play and progression of games with the right flexibility for developers to ensure a fair and fun experience. The article further reads, Xbox does plan to make its IP accessible via other devices. However, through the firm streaming service, xCloud. Meanwhile, the company has a number of projects in the works for PC and has developed a PC specific version of its Game Pass subscription service. Microsoft also supports Minecraft across all platforms. Wow. <laughs> so where is this all coming from 
because directly after E3, you know, you had um, head of internal studios, Matt Booty, say to, I believe I, I, it was Business Insider. He said to somebody, uh, no, you're a gamer. Your gamer had asked Matt Booty, hey, pretty much if people are looking forward to playing uh, uh, Halo on PlayStation, enough people call for it, they'll do it, right? You'll, you'll, you guys will do it. And Matt pretty much responded, well, yeah, if enough people want it, I guess we will. You know what I'm saying? And and then he followed up in the interview with uh, Game Informer last week where he kind of like backtracked that. And this right here is even more backtracking, right? <laughs> so you, 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 you take that into consideration. One has to ask himself, hey, is this the real deal, holy field. What does your boy MM2K think about this, okay? Well, I'll tell you this. This is either one or two things, obviously. This is either Xbox pulling the wool over our eyes again and doing some miraculous wordplay, which I wanna see how the hell they finagle themselves out of this one if they're not being straightforward and honest, or two, this is Xbox finally realizing that the Kumbaya is not working. It just ain't working. Um, first and foremost, gamers aren't falling for feels. Hey, I don't want to beat another man down to lift us up speeches. It, it, I think it's become more than evident that nobody's falling for that jargon anymore. Gamers love inherent competition. Inherent competition drives up quality and inherent competition does not require Microsoft to beat down Sony. As a matter of fact, even the staunchest Xbox fans know that there is no way in God's green earth, <laughs> and and in the in the current uh, in the current future, right, that Xbox will ever be able to beat down PlayStation. And this is coming from somebody that's not really a fan of PlayStation games. But as far as gaming is concerned, Sony and the PlayStation brand is just too huge. So the best Microsoft can do is compete. They can, they can edge them out, but as far as beating them down, that will never happen just based on Xbox competing. So again, that's why that's become a farce. But also, I think Phil and company at Xbox is finally realizing that working with other platforms is a problem and not so much Nintendo, okay? Nintendo's been working with Microsoft in, in, in a good fashion, in good faith. But I think more so Sony. And I really believe that when Sony, after, well, let me, let me say it like this. Let me say it like this rather. After Microsoft finally swallowed its pride and said, you know what? We gotta give in. We can't just rest on our laurels of, of Game Pass, of this, uh, of Gears 5 coming to Game Pass and us just saying, hey, you got Game Pass and so you're gonna play the game anyway. We really have to advertise this campaign. And after they did such a phenomenal job and they got world-renowned accolades for what they did at Gamescom, right? The first inside Xbox that people said was actually good. Sony then drops the bomb and says, we picked up Insomniac Games directly after that damn presentation. That was a shot at Microsoft, a shot at Xbox, an unnecessary one as far as Xbox is probably concerned. And they're like, you know what? Gloves is off. You know what I'm saying? We're no longer gonna play nice at the very least. Maybe not gloves off, but we're not gonna play nice as much as we have been anymore. And rightfully so, all right? Because again, inherent competition only makes things better. I also wanna say this. I think Phil and company and a lot of these companies in Silicon Valley, I truly wholeheartedly believe that they become a victim of this quote unquote grassroot exec <laughs> type of mentality. And let me explain what it is. Let me explain what it is. And let me tell you why it has been a failure within the gaming industry. Okay. So society as a whole, always wants to apply success in one area that they or success that they've seen in one area to everything that we do prime example when as it relates to business now follow me here mark zuckerberg with facebook after this guy that was living in the basement or going to college or you know eating noodles and noodles seven times a week 
you know, for sustenance after he out of nowhere just skyrockets with Facebook and becomes an, a, an instant millionaire, then billionaire overnight. You've had American businesses, one after one, even established ones, feel like, hey, we got to do the same thing. So a lot of the greedy tactics that you see in day-to-day -day businesses started to even get even worse because people were looking at Mark Zuckerberg and said, hey, if this little scrawny kid can make become a billionaire overnight, we should be able to make more money. We've been in this game for Lord knows how long, right? And that again, that's one example of us seeing trends and, and, and businesses and culture wanting to spread it across the board even when they don't apply, okay? Silicon Valley companies are falling victim to the same habit, okay? And that same habit is this grassroot uh, exec thing. You know what I'm saying? You got a lot of elitists. And again, I'm not saying this at a political level. I just mean the pure definition of an elitist. You have a lot of these rich elitists that want to dress a certain way, talk a certain way, seem like they're down to earth, right? You know, put on the limbo shirts and do all that other stuff. And they want to sell you their personality and their, their down to earthiness instead of focusing on giving you premier product right and where do we see this at and again i have no political affiliation i am not a fan of trump i'm not a fan of obama i'm not a fan of anybody but i've you've seen this with obama and you've seen this kind of with trump but primarily with obama where obama his main selling point was his his down to earthiness right with a certain culture and a certain certain class and he came across as this grassroots person even though obama is a rich ass lawyer when he ran for president he's an elitist he drinks he sips and drinks wine in martha's vineyard his current lifestyle even before he became president right before that he can't relate to the average person but he sold himself on that aesthetic. He sold himself on that mantra. And that attitude and that mind state spread in Silicon Valley. So now you don't see execs in suits anymore. You see them in the t-shirt and sneakers and in a nice little sports coat and sitting in the coffee shops. And people have become connected to that. And I think Xbox thought that they could utilize that type of mantra within gaming. They have made more money than they ever have, but this is the problem. Gaming is a different animal, baby. At the end of the day, you gotta come through with the product. This is not just a social gathering. This is primarily goods and services. This is how the consumers look at it. And things like Game Pass and backwards compatibility, they go nowhere if the content is not good, okay? It's not the social gathering that you can sell. You got to sell the content, right? So maybe Phil and company realize now that they got to roll up their sleeves on their Xbox onesies. <laughs> get out of the lounge room taking selfies and do some serious work and get things turned around long term. And if so, your boy is for it. Because I think, again, with Sony doing what they did with the infamous announcement, finally put blood in Microsoft's eye. But we'll, we'll keep an eye on this one to, to see how this pans out. But with that said, that's it from your boy MM2K. And hey, you know what? Who cares what I think? You Let me know what you think about my bibble babble in the comment section below, you know what I'm saying? But if you did like what I had to say, you can catch me on the corner of every boulevard, baby. Check out the links below to follow me. Hey, yo, I do a show with your peoples, Dirk Griggity, Neethals, Snow Bunny is called, Scram Punks. Look up hashtag Scram Punks via PNTS Network for more information on that. Check me out with my brothers, the Broadband Bullies. We out here doing the damn thing. Check out that Patreon link. Check out that link to that gear. Check out that Discord link, you know what I'm saying? Check, also check your boy out every Sunday around 7.30 p.m. Eastern on the Best Damn Podcast, period. We just had the Creative God Award David Jaffe on. Check out episode two, definitely, on Next Gen 720's channel. And with that being said, oh, also check me out on the Hard Knock Digital Culture. During the time of this recording, I will be streaming Remnant uh, from the Ashes on the channels, getting um, some big time due on my channel. With that being said, you guys have a wonderful gaming day. Peace.